welcome back to Medieval Mayhem. Today's project we're looking at a medieval style wheelbarrow. So how cool is this? A friend of mine a couple of months ago gave me a bit of a challenge, asked me to see if I could come up with one. So started looking into the research and the history of this is actually quite fascinating. So in ancient cultures we often think about wheelbarrows being the main means of being able to transport stuff around, moving stones around for the Egyptians while building pyramids or the Greeks or the Romans building their roads and whatnot. Actually, this isn't true. And historically, uh, the archaeology and the history says that they just used sleds. Uh, and the wheelbarrow seems to have been invented around the 5th or 6th century, so after the fall of Rome, pretty much, the, the, after the Romans left Britain and whatnot. We're looking for a, a, an aesthetic or a feel or a look of something medieval without it being overly kind of um, driven by something that's unachievable. Uh, it needs to be visually relatable to people as being a historic item without being overly complicated. And we don't have a lot of evidence for these. There is none in archaeology. None have survived since, you know, the 5th or 6th century. And what's that like? 1500 years of history. So nothing has survived as such. Well, we do have pictures in iconography and, and carvings and a few statues. So that's quite fascinating, but very little to go on. And all of them are a little bit different. I wanted to go with something that, again, as I say, is, a, is quite relatable. The first major key to this project was the wheel. And as I found out very quickly, no one really makes wooden wheels like this, not in Australia anyway. Um, there's a guy over in Toowoomba that does do some, not many, and he charges a lot of money for them. So that was a bit of a challenge. I then asked a whole bunch of local carpenters if they would be interested, and all of them said no. That was also quite frustrating. How could I get around this challenge? I can't do a wheelbarrow without a wheel, right? I came across one on Etsy, which I ended up purchasing some of. So I bought several of these. Now, when I got it, I realised there's a slight problem with these, and that is, it's made of a soft wood. I think it's cherry from memory. And so to get around that, I did actually come around a, uh, I found a wood turner locally who was willing to produce some for me. So I said, okay, can you, can you knock one out? And he's like, yep, no worries. And so he's in the process at the moment of making a few. Now he's using um, iron bark, which is a, an Australian world-renowned hardwood, uh, as going to be the wheel hub. That's obviously this section here in the middle. The spokes, I believe, he's using uh, a dowel for, and then obviously there's the parts on the on the sides, the actual wheel hub itself. To get around the problem of this being a softer wood, because what that means is it may not survive a great deal of use at reenactment events. So, given the cost, and obviously I had to import it and run it through customs, um, that's not ideal for me. So, I had a friend of mine produce a steel rim for the two to our wheels, and that's not overly historically accurate. We do know that they had steel treads for the chariots back in the Roman times, but they seem to have died out. Um, and really, there's no evidence of steel treads beyond the Roman Empire really until you start coming into um, the, the end of the medieval period and the renaissance period. So I wanted to run with a very simple relatable design, that was my goal, um, and I just simply used these two long pieces of, I think they're 65 by 32 millimeter Tasmanian oak. When I'm working on a project like this, the woods that I use are Tasmanian oak. The alternative to that is pine. I buy my timbers all from the local hardware store, which in Australia is Bunnings. Tasmanian oak has the disadvantage of being quite a pricey item, but it's robust, it's hard, it's weather resistant, and it's also fairly um, accurate for the medieval period. And I then happened to realise that in my wood pile of scraps and offcuts, I had a bunch of wood. This was fantastic and I managed to use all of these for basically the remaining of the project. For a project like this, the tools that I'm going to use are power tools. Yes, yes, I'm very well aware they didn't have power tools in the medieval period. I'm a disabled single dad of three kids, two of whom are teens, so my time is quite limited. 
and I've also got to work with the time that I've got otherwise I end up with a lot of projects just sitting on my front porch. <laughs> Pretty much all of you who are going to follow this project or take inspiration from this project are going to use power tools as well. So I might as well do it that way. This isn't a historical project in the sense that I'm trying to recreate something from the past. What I'm trying to do here is to create something with the correct aesthetic for a medieval or reenactment kind of event and that I can use in a campsite to create the ambience and the immersion that people who come to visit will expect to see. Safety is really important in this kind of project. I always use a pair of safety glasses, a mask, and a hearing defenders. I cut in some dados uh, into the long kind of arms of the, the wheelbarrow, and I then used these two dados for the, the cross beams basically to hold it all together. These came out absolutely perfect. Uh, I couldn't have asked for better carpentry, absolutely sensational. Um, what this means is it's a very robust and rigid design, absolutely fantastic, that's just what I wanted. I then used um, these offcuts to produce the deck of the wheelbarrow and I left that for 24 hours. I'm just using a glue called Sikaflex, it's perfect, uh, works really well for me. And as I say, this was just offcuts of wood, but it worked so well. Now I am using modern nails here, I am cheating a little bit, I realise that. Um, but I'm really just looking for a visual aesthetic for a, a wheelbarrow that would be suitable for SCA type events, LARP events, um, and possibly medieval reenactment as well. Okay, once that dried, I then used more of the upcuts to, um, to build up the sides of the wheelbarrow. Um, that worked really well, and I matched that with just sort of trimmed it a little bit just to give it some shape. Uh, I found this in incredibly robust and really quite strong. Uh, I sort of built this up a bit. It's actually about 22 centimeters tall, which is great. Um, and I think that's perfectly reasonable. So something like this historically would probably be used um, around a medieval encampment to clean up waste products, to get rid of um, ash from fires, to get rid of stuff like you know the manure from horses there would be hundreds of horses at any medieval encampment horses were the main means of moving stuff and therefore you had to get rid of the waste otherwise you medieval people would have realized they were risking disease and that kind of thing if you'd like to challenge me to do a medieval project whether it's a carpentry project a sewing project leatherworking project or perhaps even blacksmithing please leave a comment below and ask me what you'd like to challenge me with very keen to hear your ideas and suggestions. I had an off cut of dowel which I've used for the axle so I cut an appropriate hole in the front and just trimmed into that dowel. I realized through using it though I've got to have to um, put in some sort of pegs either side of the axle to stop it from kind of falling out but that's, that's absolutely fine there's no issue. Right the wheel fits perfect I'm really happy with that I could possibly even go for a slightly larger wheel but I don't think that's going to make too much difference. So happy with this, um, but time was against me and also we're in the storm season pretty much now for Queensland where I live. I live in Queensland, Australia and we're getting some cracking storms coming through. So I've uh, been struggling a bit with trying to sort of manage the construction of this around uh, the storms that are going on and the rain. I sort of cheated a little bit and I, um, I used these two legs for the project uh, I had to, to use screws to put them in. I don't think that's a massive problem. You can't see it, it's not a big deal. Uh, and the wheelbarrow itself has come out as a very robust piece. Uh, I don't actually see these failing at any point at all whatsoever. Um, so this has worked really well for me. I'm really happy with it. And it's just a, a really good extra piece to put into that kind of immersive element of my medieval encampment. And I'm really excited. I find this very easy to use. Uh, I find it, as I say, it's very robust. It's, it, it's super lightweight. And it was almost all made out of scrap wood. So, I mean, how good is that really? Let's, like, come on. In terms of cost, I basically paid for two of these pieces of Tasmanian oak. That was about it, plus the wheel, which is obviously a bit expensive. But I've got something that will probably outlast me. There's no reason why this couldn't last sort of 10, 20, 30 years 
and I reckon that's pretty amazing. If not more, if it's looked after. Kids, I'm talking to you. Um, so I certainly hope this can get passed on to one of my kids uh, in the future. Maybe one day if they want to take on my medieval group, who knows. Uh, or, or someone else does. And I, I would love to think that one day, you know, my stuff is still being used in, in as I say, 30, 40 plus years time. This, um, this medieval throne chair has come out so well. Uh, it just almost kind of started off as just a bit of fun to see uh, some kind of joinery techniques and some, um, some medieval woodworking style stuff and yet yeah, it kind of came together almost all on its own and it's, it's just so good. So I'm so happy with some of the stuff I'm making at the moment. There's a lot of projects still coming. Um, I'm really excited by this so I think this could go, you know, We've got a lot of content, a lot more content coming out for you to share with you guys. Really hope you like, subscribe and share. Uh, and yeah, this is just working out really well. Please leave a comment below if there's a project you'd like to see done or if there's uh, something you'd like me to do, challenge me with. Um, I'm all about it, so let's go. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you in my next video.